Hi, everyone. Welcome to episode 38 of Marketo Foo. Uh, my name is Joe Wrights, and today what we're going to be talking about is uh, some Marketo engagement program best practices. Before I start, though, special thanks to Kevin Lau and the customer marketing team for these dope shades uh, for the Fearless 50 program. Um, very, very nice. Um, but let's uh, let's dive right in. So let's see. Screen share. Okay. Uh, so you guys see my screen now. So basically, I'm in the Marketo sandbox right now, and what I want to take you guys through is uh, sorry for my dog. <laughs> what I want to take you guys through is a quick preview of how basically engagement programs work and a couple. Uh, couple different options you have. So embedding programs versus individual assets. So the basic way uh, to explain Marketo engagement programs is you can have one or more streams. Uh, and I've seen these done, I think the most I've ever seen used functionally is about nine. Uh, that's my dog running on my deck. <laughs> um, but basically um, how these how these are used is in the, um, within each stream, you might have like some kind of journey you wanna take your customers on. So. Uh, engagement programs, the way I describe them to uh, when I was a consultant, the way I describe them to clients, and here at AWS, the way I describe them to our internal stakeholders is anytime you want to tell a story through marketing materials, uh, that's that's when engagement program really, really shines. So uh, basically what you can do is you can have these streams dedicated to different uh, avenues of the customer buying cycle, lead life cycle, whatever you want to call that, uh, your RCM, for example. And uh, or anything else and just, you know, tell the story and then transition them from stream to stream based on when, uh, you know, certain activities that might mean they're, they're ready for stream two or, um, or something like that. But in this case, uh, I have this, this template built as like an either or scenario. So in the column on the left in stream one, what you see are Marketo programs that are embedded. And in stream two, we have just the individual email assets. So within Marketo and within, within engagement streams, what you can do is you can embed, <laughs> sorry about my dog. Uh, you can embed um, either or. So you can, you can embed entire programs, you can embed uh, uh, individual assets like emails. You, if you have the capability to do SMS messages, you can also embed those into nurture streams. Uh, that's a very, very cool thing to do. You can embed in event programs in the top of a stream. <laughs> Or uh, and anytime that you want to have everybody that's in a given stream receive the next a certain piece of content, like say you create something new, like an event you want to invite everybody to, if you just place that at the top of the stream, everybody will get it on the next cast. So uh, basic, so that's that's how streams work. But if we if we back up uh, down to the program management here, uh, what you'll see is uh, similar to like what we would do in a basic batch campaign, where we just say uh, you know have a smart campaign that uh, changes the program status and sends an email, uh, looks, listens for opens, clicks, unsubscribes, that kind of thing. What we do with an engagement program instead is we have a similar structure where we add members and you'll add members based on whatever criteria uh, makes sense for your business. So I didn't populate the smart list. Uh, but then basically the flow is just add to engagement program, uh, choose the engagement program name and choose which stream they want to go in. Now, depending on your how you have your stream set up, you might uh, have some choices here for if certain criteria are met, add them to a different stream. So uh, the way that I've, I've had a lot of success in my past is if you have a stream dedicated to top of funnel, tofu, middle of funnel, mofu, uh, and bottom of funnel, bofu, uh, that, that makes it very easy to understand like what kind of content should go in each stream. And it's pretty, pretty easy to know based on your, your own lead life cycle at your, at your company, when they should transition from tofu to mofu to bofu or back and regress. So using that knowledge, uh, you'd simply add members. And then one thing I forgot to add here was, give you guys a chance to guess, was the change, uh, change, nope, not program success, program status. So here we would just mark them as a member of a nurture. Okay. And then similarly, uh, we have pause and unpause, and those are exactly what they sound like. So you, there, there could be a lot of criteria that you'd want to pause someone on. The most basic ones that I think just about everybody uses is, hey, if they're a member of this program and they become marketing suspended or they unsubscribe or um, you know whatever preference center filters you may have for uh, given communication types, if they opt out of those, let's go ahead and pause them. And that's all this one is doing, where uh, it looks at the engagement program cadence and it sets it to pause. 
And the unpause members is just the inverse of that. So if they opt back in or they uh, stop being marketing suspended or whatever preference center filter, um, they, they become cadence changes to not unpaused, but normal, but, which means unpaused. But the other thing that we're going to talk about, and I'll come back to this, is pro nurture program success. And this is the crux of the difference between embedding entire programs into a stream versus embedding individual assets. So it's very simple. Streams will always look at an email asset like this in, in the embedded assets stream and say, okay, have they gotten this email? Yes, no. And if no, go on to the next one until Marketo finds an email they haven't received, which is fine. Uh, what it does in the case of a program, when you embed a whole program, it looks to see, does this lead have a status in that program? So are they a member of the program? Uh, is there progression status like clicks link, filled out form, uh, opened email, anything like that? If they have any status, Marketo knows to skip them because it thinks they got the email. So uh, here you have to kind of be crafty about how you set your progression statuses within these programs just to ensure that emails don't get skipped. Uh, the other thing too is um, system communication limits and any other communication limits you layer over the top, no matter which uh, method you employ, uh, you could have somebody cast, you know, someone in the engagement program that won't receive a given cast because they're past communication limits. So keep an eye on that. But the fundamental difference between these two tactics is, yeah, this is pretty simple for Marketo to know that, yep, they got this email. No, they didn't. And it's similarly not complicated to understand if they have a status in these great then it'll skip to the first one they don't have a status in but the the way that marketo programs engagement programs work is uh if you if you want to when you get down to your attribution reporting later and you want to say something as simple as uh okay i want to know was my nurture program effective in causing these leads to convert into a customer or sql or whatever whatever it was um you could see that just from by the virtue of the program success for the entire engagement program. But if you did individual emails, you'll have to do a little more digging manually to see which other programs within that stream or the series of streams share credit for creating that opportunity or a pipeline or that revenue or what have you. Versus if you use entire Marketo programs, what you get instead is that you can report on uh, two channels being successful at once. So you can have your engagement program, your, your nurture channel being successful uh, because they got success in the entire program and success in individual programs within a stream or more than one stream. So that's, that's really the, the fundamental benefit. And what most consultants will steer you towards, uh, most good consultants will steer you towards, is doing uh, embedded programs. And the way these work, it's very simple. We're going to actually delete Tofu 2 and run through the whole exercise. So the way these are structured, um, these aren't fully built out. But basically, I have an email that's approved. I have my send email smart campaign. You would also have your progression statuses for email was opened or clicked or filled out form or whatever. And then uh, a basic reporting email performance report, uh, just as I would normally build a basic batch program. Now, to add that to a stream, all I simply do is drag it in, and then I have to select it from the dropdown. So uh, 02, that's the right one. Uh, funny thing to note is it'll always, these program names always append to the nurture program name, so episode 38, embedded programs versus assets, and then dot, just, and then the embedded program name, then another dot would be whatever comes after, like so 01-email1, whatever assets are inside the program. So what you would see, because now I have to select when this program is embedded in the stream and its cadence runs, like when it's when it, the Marketo engagement program goes to cast it next, which smart campaign does it run? And you have to choose the one that has the send email flow step in it. So I simply do that and it's here and I have to right click and activate it before it will become ungray. You'll get a little play symbol next to it. That means it's ready to go in this nurture. So we're going to deactivate for now. Um, and... Uh, you can also edit availability, so you can kind of schedule when things become inactive or, or you know, what have you. So if you know uh, an event is only going to be topical for, you know, a month or so before, before, the, before the event, you add it to the top of the stream, get out all your demand gen through the, the nurture stream, and manage your, your communication limits uh, in a more efficient way because you're communicating everything on a set cadence through your streams. And you don't have to worry about rescheduling batch campaigns and all that. So it's a really sophisticated thing. Uh, and then also the thing I didn't cover was uh, to set stream cadence, you click on the very confusingly labeled set stream cadence link. 
And basically what this does is you have to set what date the first cast should be and then how often it should cast. So most people go weekly. Uh, people pick Tuesdays and Thursdays and anecdotally they think those are the best set times. It's not been my personal experience, but uh, what have you. So uh, we could say, let's just do the stereotypical Tuesday at 9 a.m. And it's going to be whatever time zone you have set up in Marketo. So what this is basically going to say after I click save is every Tuesday at 9 a.m. This is going to cast. And the next, if you ho hover over it, it'll tell you the future cast dates and times. So September 11th, 18th, and um, 25th. So, um, and obviously, like I said, you have to activate these in the stream in order for them to, to uh, be available in the run. But then from there, uh, your programs will just go out and you'll be able to pull re easy reporting later just to know that, yes, uh, these programs or this one program was effective, was the thing that drove the change. So uh, in, in creating an opportunity or whatever. So the, to go back to this nurture success, reason that I encourage you to embed programs rather than individual assets is this is a super scalable uh, thing. So basically what this smart campaign does is it listens for a program status to change. If the program starts with whatever your nurture is, which is what every single embedded program is going to um, contain, it's going to start with episode 38 embedded programs versus assets. So if it starts with that, and the success is true, meaning um, not just that they were sent something, but that they, whatever the success status was. So you'll remember uh, from an earlier episode where we talked about the difference of channels, where uh, an event might have different channels, like attended might be a success status versus um, in the case of just a basic batch campaign, it would be like clicked link and email or filled out form. Uh, you could, by doing it this way with just a simple program status has changed, program starts with the engagement program name and success is true you're looking only at those success value changes in the embedded programs. And then here we just say, yep, change the uh, program status for the nurture as a whole to influenced. And then within each of these basic batch campaigns, let's see if I did one where I actually built out the progressions. Yeah, so you'd have clicks, link, fills out form, whatever whatever else you you should have would be within uh, within your embedded programs. So if I wanted to create another program inside this nurture, what, what I invariably will do, um, these are something that you never really build in one shot. It's kind of something you add to over time. So say I know I have an email going out next week. I'm going to right click this and say uh, clone. And then I'm going to say you know, whatever order in the series just as a best practice. And I'm going to hit create. I'm going to hit create. Oh. <laughs> So rookie mistake, uh, always remember clone to the same program and then it'll let you actually click create. I mark out a real good. Okay, <laughs> so uh, so that created email three and then it's the same song and dance as before. So you edit your email, your smart campaigns, whatever, and then you can come up to the engagement program itself, go to the streams tab and you drag in 03, select your email. So you can just start typing 03 tofu and then it's gonna pull up the right program name and then it's going to ask you which smart campaign it wants to run when it goes and then that's it so what these smart campaigns say that i just selected um, was basically so when you look at it you'll see this weird icon where it's like an unlit light bulb with a green arrow meaning it's kind of like a request campaign but basically all all these are looking for uh, as a best practice what i'd recommend is uh, everyone's going to say member of engagement program is true the stream is the program is whatever and the stream is whatever uh, something else you should also add uh, as you as you build out your emails is you want to add something in to say and make sure that they also were sent email two and one if you're sending email three. Um, that way, it's just a little more idiot proof of um, you know Marketo having clear instruction on who qualifies for a run versus not. Because what will happen a lot of times if you don't add that, uh, there's obviously zero people in the sandbox. But what would happen if I had a hundred thousand people in the engagement program and I was only looking at members of the engagement program to qualify for this run when it goes to actually do the cast even if there's only 10,000 people that would get this email on the next cast um, it would have a number the, the smart campaign would look like it has a number that's past communication limits right let's say your communication limits were 50,000 um, like this oh I guess I don't have that option in the sandbox most users will have something down here that says uh, auto abort if communication uh, if you know, number of set to affect leads exceeds, you know, typical numbers like 50,000 or, I mean, it depends on your, your database size and your instance, but uh, we use 50,000 at AWS, for example. 
And, um, you know, it, it takes a conscious effort to override that where, um, anyway, so basically if you don't add some of that other logic here, what you're going to, if you have a hundred thousand people as members of the engagement program, the set to effect here is going to say a hundred thousand, and that could cause you to error out on your, uh, your communication limits. So, um, just the good best practice where you'd say, um, was sent email. And also have uh, uh, add all the emails. Actually, um, you would want to make sure that they got uh, tofu two here because we're we're building this as a sequence. They couldn't have got tofu two unless they unless that smart campaign said they got tofu one. So you're always making sure that they got the last email that was supposed to be previous in a stream. So with that. Um, that's that's about it. So let me find where my screen share is. Stop. Cool. So uh, I'm Joe Wrights. This is my dog, Tango. And uh, this has been another episode of Marketo Foo. Uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. And uh, we'll be back again tomorrow with a uh, special guest star. So uh, Marketo Foo first. But anyway, have fun. Take care.